a pleasant day STEM learners. This is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher. For the second video lesson for our week 3, we will talk about the test statistic, which is Z or the T stat. So at the end of this video lesson, you should be able to identify the appropriate test statistic. So what is a test statistic? A test statistic is a value used to determine the probability needed in decision making. So you are going to compute that test statistic. So the decision that we make depends on the computed test statistic. So the formula in computing for the test statistic depends on the sample size, meaning the sample size has an effect on the shape of the distribution. And by increasing the number of samples, it shows the central limit theorem, which states that if we increase the number of samples, then the sampling distribution of the means approaches the normal distribution, regardless of the shape of the parent population distribution. However, if the central limit theorem does not hold, then maybe the sample is very small. So we will use another type of test, which is what we call the t-test. Always remember that for the central limit theorem to be guaranteed, the sample size must be n is greater than 30. So an n greater than 30 would mean a large sample, meaning we use a z test. But an, if the sample size n is less than 30, then that is what we call a small sample test in which the sample size is very small, so we will be using another test, which is the t-test. So in those two examples, if the population standard deviation is given, then that is a z-test. And if the population standard deviation is not given, then we use a small letter s to represent the value for the sample standard deviation. So here are the two types of test statistics. So first is when sigma is given, we use a z-test. And you can actually right away see a z-test whenever the sample is greater than 30. However, if the population standard deviation sigma is unknown, therefore there is a small letter s now which represents the sample standard deviation. Therefore, we use a t-test for that. And here are the formula. For the z-test, we have x bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of n. And for the t-test, we have t is equal to x bar minus mu over s over the square root of n. Okay. So let's have illustrative example. Use your calculator to compute the appropriate test statistic Z or T using the given values. So use Z test statistic if sigma is given and T test statistics if S is given. So obviously, since here in the exact given example, sigma is given, so we use a Z test. So the formula is Z is equal to X bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of N. Substituting the values respectively, we'll have 9.2 minus 10 over 3 over the square root of 68. So you, using a scientific calculator, you can right away put these values on how you exactly see it. And the answer should be rounded off into two decimal places or nearest hundreds. So the answer is negative 2.20. Next example. Mu is 26, sigma is 10, n is 80. And our sample mean is 30. So obviously, again, sigma is known. So therefore, we use a z-test. Substituting the values, we have 30 minus 26 over 10 over the square root of 10. So putting this in your scientific calculators would give us a value 3.58. So this is our test statistic or the computed test statistic. Number three, 
mu is equal to 85, um, S is equal to 15, N is 50, and the sample mean X bar is 82. Notice that our S is given. Okay, so sigma is unknown. So using this one, we have 82 minus 85 over 15 over the square root of 50. So we use a t test for this one. So the answer is negative 1.41. So what is a one sample z test or t test? A one sample test is a test that is conducted in one sample purportedly coming from a population with mean mu. So it is sometimes called the significance test for a single mean. Meaning, if you want to test if there is a significant difference with all the chicken, the, 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 the Jollibee chicken or the chicken joy in different stores, then you will be um, talking about the level of crispness of that chicken. And you are going to take those samples out of the population. Therefore, you are performing a what we call a one sample test. Obviously, there will be no significant difference with all the chickens in any other branch around the country or across the globe. So that is how it works. So if you want to conduct a one sample test on the claims of companies about the content of their product, say for example, um, a Coke, um, a Coke Casalo is 800 ml and you wanted to test that one. So you will be getting 100 sample bottles out of that Coke Casalo bottles. And that is a one sample test because you are testing the significance of a single mean. So the sample itself came from the population. So it is a comparison between the sample and the population. So that now ends our discussion. This is again Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher.